Hey guys, Richard Holder here and welcome to the channel. How well do modular forwards respond to power adders? You know what I'm talking about, nitrous or blowers or turbos. In this video, we're going to find out how well modular forward motors respond to power adders. You know what I'm talking about, we're talking about nitrous or a blower or a turbo. Actually, in this case, we're talking about a blower and a turbo because in the very first test we run an O3 Cobra motor with a roots blower and then add nitrous because the only thing better than boost is boost with a side order of juice. To get things started with our power adders we're actually starting off with a supercharged combination. That's right we're going to have two power adders. We've got a supercharger and nitrous which is an awesome combination because nitrous works well with anything superchargers and turbochargers. We have an O3 Cobra motor, and what I did was run it basically in stock trim. Now, we did take the stock exhaust manifolds off and long, ran long tube headers. I also ran it with the stock exhaust manifolds, but it's amazing how much power these things make. This was actually a crate motor that came from the guys at Ford Racing. So basically, it was, an, it was a production line O3 Cobra motor. We put long tube inch and 5 8 hooker headers on it. We ran it with uh, only the accessories that were required to run it on the dyno. We ran it with a fast management system and an open throttle body. So it was kind of optimized compared to the way that they measure it uh, from the factory. But this thing made really good power. This thing was running about eight pounds of boost, which is what the factory's rated at. And we ran it again with all the factory stuff. The only change that we made was a set of long tube headers. So run in that condition, this thing made 500 horsepower, almost 501 horsepower. Peak torque checked in at 465, but we didn't add the nitrous yet. We actually made a couple of other changes to it. And here's what happened. And basically what we did was turn the boost up. So now we installed uh, different pulleys on our blower setup. And we um, did an optimized timing curve and stuff, which we had done before. Uh, we had a 3.2 inch blower pulley and a 7.5 inch crank pulley. So run in this configuration, we raised the boost. This thing made more power, produced 532 horsepower and 517 foot-pounds of torque. Now that we had our boost, what we wanted to do was run nitrous on it. So we, what we did was configure this with a Zex uh, wet EFI kit. So it's injecting fuel and nitrous together. We positioned that in front of the throttle body, actually into the throttle body. And here's what happened when we added our Zex. And what we did was basically just ran a hundred shot. And again, like we would expect, <laughs> the hundred shot actually added a hundred shot. Our power went from 533 horsepower to 634 horsepower, almost exactly 100 horsepower. And the torque was up quite a bit from 517 foot pounds to 633 foot pounds. So as you can see, the, the combination obviously responded very well to the nitrous which is like every other combination, whether it's NA or turbocharge or supercharge, nitrous adds a good bit of power even on your O3 Cobra. Now let's take a look at more supercharge. So this test for all you Coyote fans, and say I'm not including any of the Coyote stuff. This one was actually run on a 2011. I actually did this test in 2010, so it was very, very early on. The Coyote motor that I tested was a crate motor from the guys at Ford Performance, and they also supplied a controls pack so we, that we could run everything with the factory ECU. And thanks goes to Ken Chrisley for coming over from Kenny Bell when he was there and doing the tuning on this thing because I I have no idea how to tune this with a with an SCT or you know any any kind of software that revolves around the factory ECU normally I do this stuff with the um aftermarket stuff like Holly and Fast and the new Megasquirt stuff but never with the factory stuff so he came over and there it's pretty involved doing the coyote stuff and it takes a lot of time and effort to get these things right so what we did was we uh, unpackaged the motor basically from the crate. We ran it with the stock exhaust manifolds. This particular starting point is actually with long tube headers because we ran the Kenny Bell with long tube headers. So factory Coyote, uh, no accessories on this motor. We ran, I don't think if I remember right, I'll, we'll check the photo. Uh, we ran an open throttle body and the uh, factory air box. And we ran uh, the long tube headers with collector extensions. So basically, this was kind of a crate motor run in optimized trim with a good exhaust on it. And, uh, you know, it wasn't full exhaust with the cats and all that. So this thing's making more power the way that we test it than it does from the factory. But still, this thing did very well. And these coyotes are impressive. Not even more than just the peak power that they made given their displacement. But the average torque production is really good with variable cam timing and stuff. So these are impressive deals, even this early one. And the Gen 2 and 3 stuff is obviously even better. So run with the long tube headers in NA trim. 
Our Coyote produced 461 horsepower. Peak torque checked in at 411 foot-pounds. And here's what happened when we installed the Kenny Bell kit for I designed for a Coyote Mustang. And what we did was run this thing with um, basically an emissions legal trim, let's say. If this thing was only running like 6 pounds, uh, 6.4 pounds at the peak uh, out here near 7,000. We're at 6,900 RPM. We had the factory airbox on it. So this thing was as mild as it could possibly be with low boost and the factory air intake and everything. Because one thing that these positive displacement blowers do, all blowers do, all positive displacement blowers, is they respond very well to um, changes in inlet restriction. So big throttle bodies, big air intakes, big inlet manifolds going into the blower, all those things help. But run with the Kenny Bell at just six pounds, this thing produced over 600 horsepower, 610 horsepower and 501 foot-pounds of torque, but we were actually, obviously we were just getting started. We weren't even running um, what the boost level that Kenny Bell normally recommends. So what we did was we went through a series of upgrades and eventually got to the point where we were running the, the big Kenny Bell air inlet system, the big throttle body, the big in uh, intake manifold going into the blower and more, and every bit is important, let's say, was a change in pulley size. We went down from a 4.125 uh, blower pulley, which is big, down to a 3.875 pulley, which is still not terribly small and, and is only spinning this thing up to about 9.9 .9 pounds of boost, so just under 10 pounds of boost, which is not very much for these blowers, for these motors. The 2.8 liter Kenny Bell can easily surpass a thousand horsepower, so we were just kind of scratching the surface with this thing. But even at just like right at 10 pounds, this thing produced over 700 horsepower, 704 horsepower, Peak torque checked in at 549 foot-pounds of torque. And be, because I was worried about uh, hurting this 03 Cobra motor, not that I think we would have if we would have run E85 and all that stuff, we ran uh, race gas on this and not E85, so there's more power to be had from E85. We did run the the Kenny Bell intercooler. We ran dyno water through the intercooler. All of that worked great, but an easy 700 horsepower at 10 pounds, which is something you could probably run on pump gas, we put a splash of 100 in there just to make sure that everything was kind of safe. And in thinking back now, I probably should have run this on E85. Now let's take a look at hap what happens when we run turbos. Our next test was also run on a an 03 Cobra motor. In fact, it was the same one as the supercharged version where we ran the nitrous on. But this time we actually did a big comparison between turbos and blowers and uh, the different kinds of blowers, like an Eaton Roots or a, a Roots blower. We did a Kenny Bell twin screw. We did a Vortex centrifugal. And in this case here, we did two turbos. And that video is up if you want to check that out. There's a comparison for all of those, so you can see the different boost curves that they make and the different power outputs that they make at the same boost and air fuel and timing. So you can compare your favorites and you guys can argue back and forth about which form of force induction is the best. But we're gonna take a look at how well the turbos did here on our NA version. And what we did was remove the root supercharger and replace it with a naturally aspirated 2001 Cobra Long Runner factory intake manifold. This motor had also been upgraded with a set of comp cams. They were the uh, Extreme Energy 262 AH cams. Uh, yes, and we put valve springs in the in the in the, in the O3 Cobra heads as well. We ran long tube in and five eighths long tube headers on this and 18 inch collector extension. So run naturally aspirated our O3 O4 Cobra motor, low compression deal with the uh, comp cams, and it produced 425 horsepower and 390 foot-pounds of torque. And here's what happened after we added our twin turbo setup. This one came from the guys at HP Performance back in the day, Jimmy and Nathan. We'll start out here at about eight pounds. This was run on race gas. All of it was at least 100 octane. There was, we didn't do E85 back then, and we would have made even more power on E85. This combination was their dedicated exhaust manifolds. They had turbo exhaust manifolds. It was a pair of 57 millimeter turbos 
and a big front mounted um, air to air intercooler, which we blew air through. This one had 20 degrees of timing and right at about eight pounds, 7.9 or 8.1, right, right in that range at the top. It made 630 horsepower, 626 horsepower. Um, and peak torque was 576 foot pounds, but let's see how the thing responded as we went up in boost. Cause we, in this particular instance, we actually went up fairly far in boost. This was, uh, 11 pounds. And again, you can see the thing is spooling up exactly the same down here to 3,500 or so. And then where the wastegates allow more boost, the thing is just making more power. So it's kind of railroad tracking, which we'd like to see. Uh, 734 horsepower at 11.3 pounds. And here's a jump up to 16 pounds. Again, you can see the shape of the curve, Sa same comes up. And then where are the wastegates allowing more boost? Th this thing went up to 16.6 pounds. So we're at 896 horsepower. So just under 900 horsepower at 16.6 pounds. And here's our final run. We're going to show you at 20 pounds. Just under a thousand horsepower, 991 horsepower at 20.4 pounds of boost. You can see that this thing was responding very well to these 57 millimeter turbos. There was probably some more turbo left, although we seem to be struggling a little bit at the very top um, by trying to raise the boost. What I think was happening is we were using a manual controller and I never logged back pressure on this thing. I probably should have. I wanted, I, it would have been nice to find out what the, um, what the, back pressure was on these systems to find out if we were having that control because I think we only had like a seven pound spring in this in this manual controller and we didn't have an electronic controller so although the boost curves were you know very nice and consistent on this combination let's get to our conclusion Okay, guys, what do we learn from this little adventure running nitrous or a blower or turbos on a modular forward motor? Actually, we learn the same thing that we always learn in all of these power adder deals is all of these motors respond very well to power adders. Like the modular forward program is one of those that I always recommend boost on. Now, sure, you can get lots of power from ported heads and cams and intake manifolds and the all motor coyote stuff really makes power. But you know what makes even more power? It's when you take all that naturally aspirated power and add boost and or nitrous. I'm Richard Holder. Make sure to like, share, subscribe, ring the bell, do all that stuff. I'll keep testing.